Hey folks, Matthew Weiss here, WeissAdvice.com and Weiss Advice here on YouTube. I kind of wanted to get away from product videos, but a lot of people have hit me up asking for my opinion on this new release. This is the FabFilter Pro Q4. So I'm going to be going through each of the feature sets that they have added and whether or not I think that those feature sets make the upgrade worth it or make the plugin worth it. Here's my general take on FabFilter. I think FabFilter is pretty much a great company. There's certain plugins that they make that I use quite a bit and I think are irreplaceable. Uh, FabFilter de is the go-to. Uh, FabFilter Pro MB, very useful. Uh, FabFilter Saturn 2 is part of my own personal technique. I have a uh, kind of like a trick, I guess, that I do with it that I actually made a video on. I love that plugin for that specifically. Uh, and FabFilter Pro G is also a fantastic plugin, probably the most useful gate out on the market. FabFilter Pro Q3, a lot of my peers rave about it. They love it. Um, I'm a little more on the fence. I feel like it's a really good workflow plugin. I felt that when Infinity EQ came out, it became a little bit more in like of the two, which are very similar. I kind of started to prefer Infinity EQ by a little bit, although both really great. Um, uh, where I disagree with most people is everybody says that the sound of the FabFilter Pro Q3 is very transparent. I do not hear it that way. I hear very distinct phase artifacts with narrow cuts. I find that the notch filtering is not great sounding. Uh, and then also I feel like in general there is a sound and a tone to it. With that said, it's not a bad tone. It's not, I'm not trying to dog it really, but that's my take on it. So what I find is when I just need to get the job done, FabFilter Pro Q3 is a really, really good go-to. When I need something that's parametric and flexible that has a very, very transparent sound, I tend to lean more toward the Air Eosis. And again, that's not to necessarily create competition or anything like that. That's just my take on things. Uh, now, let's go through what FabFilter Pro Q4 has added, and I'm going to talk about each one of these features and how I would see myself using them if I feel like it's a worthwhile feature. And I'm also going to try and stay out of the sun, which is now creeping through a crack in my blinds. So we're going to do all of that here. Okay, let me turn this this way. All right, so the first thing that I thought was really interesting was this draw feature here. So I've got a drum loop for a record that I'm mixing. I like the sound of this drum loop. I probably will not change it much in my actual mix, but let's say I wanted to make it a very clean EDM-ish sound. I would use the draw tool here to kind of create a curve that would look something like this. Let's pull up that knock of the percussion, cut out some of the mids, and then give it some top end boost. And just doing that, freehanding it, we go from this. And a couple tweaks and we get something that's kind of neat. I like it. I think that it sounds pretty good. So, you know, it is kind of cool. Do I think it's all that useful, this, this draw tool? Um, actually, honestly, probably not. I think it's neat to have it. I think some people will find it very useful because it will make sense and they'll get used to the feel of drawing it out. I find it's a little clumsy and also just, I'm not sure that I would actually ever need to do it. Now, what I do find really useful is actually something much subtler, and that's the predictive mode. And this is one of the things that I really liked about Infinity EQ. Uh, they have this predictive mode as well. So if I move my corner here over to the far left, it sort of predicts, oh, you're probably gonna want a high pass. If I move it over to the far right, it goes low pass. If I move it a little bit in, it says, oh, you're probably going to be doing a shelf. And then if you're in the middle, it gives you a bell. The other thing is that if you are in the middle, it also gives you a one-click bell. It says, oh, you're probably looking to do this. So let's say I wanted to take out some of the kind of like low mid-tones here. So kind of a one-click type thing. And I think that that actually speeds up the workflow a lot more than the draw tool, even though it's not quite as flashy in how it sounds. So, okay, next thing, I've heard a rumor that the algorithm for natural phase has been changed. I want to test that. Let's find out if that is true. So in order to do this, I'm going to pull up an instance of FabFilter Pro Q4. 
and set it to natural phase and I'm going to put in a tilt shelf. This is 6 dB tilt shelf. So basically between the trough and the peak, there is a 12 dB difference. That is definitely enough to create a significant difference. And I have cloned these exact settings onto an instance of FabFilter Pro Q3. I've duplicated the track. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in a trim plugin with the phase flipped. So in other words, if these two EQs are in theory doing the exact same thing. If, however, when I play these together, we hear any sound, then we know something different is happening, which means the algorithm itself is different. The sound of the EQ has been changed. However, if we hear nothing, we get what's called a perfect null, and that says that the sound is exactly the same. So if the rumors are true and the algorithm has been changed to sound better, which I've heard has, has happened, then we will hear some kind of a sound. I don't think the rumors are true on this one. That seems to me like a pretty perfect null. So, okay, no change in the sound. And quite frankly, to be honest, I don't think that they need to change the sound. 99% of engineers are absolutely in love with it. I'm the only person out in the world who's saying that maybe it's not like absolutely the most transparent sound. But even with that being said, it's not a bad sound. It's not transparent in, to my ear, but it's not bad. So can't be mad at it. Okay, what else do we have here? Let's pull up a new instance of FabFilter. And one of the things that people have been talking about is the incorporation of the free dynamic EQ. So uh, free band dynamic EQ. So let's say I set my dynamic EQ to be, you know, a boost of some sort. Let's say every time the kick hits, I want it to be knockier. So I'm going to go over to here. If I want to, I can set this to be threshold dependent, change it from band to free, focus the band on the low tones, and now every time we hear like the low percussion, not the kick, the low percussion, this is going to excite. So let's set the attack fast, the release a little slower. Also, they finally put time constants. This was one of my main complaints actually about FabFilter, is that they didn't have the time constants set in the dynamic EQ section, and that is a really important thing to have. So, okay, let's play it now. So it's kind of cool. It allows me to work. This is really useful for working within loops or mastering or anything where you have a lot of compound sounds where you can just kind of like target the action of one sound and ch sort of change the action of that sound using this. It's obviously it's not perfect because whatever's in the background of that sound is also getting pulled up, but it's definitely more useful than just doing like a static bump when all I want to do is target that low percussion, right? So I think that that's pretty darn useful. Uh, I'm glad they incorporated that. That was one of the coolest things about the FabFilter Pro MB. And, uh, you know, I think that that's really dope that they did that. Now, another thing that they incorporated that people haven't been talking about so much, or at least not that I've seen, is the incorporation of a new filter. So this is one of the very, very few EQs, I think maybe the only one, or at least the only one that's in the mainstream of things that actually gives you an all pass filter. Now, how useful this is, I'm not sure yet. I've, I haven't been using this plugin very long, but the fact that it's there is kind of cool. An all pass filter is just phase rotation. So if I move this all pass filter around, we're not really gonna hear much. Right, it doesn't really sound like anything at least not to my ear, where an all-pass filter becomes interesting is when you're working with phase coherent material. So we have this duplicate track of this loop, right? If I, let's turn these down a little bit since they're gonna be summing together. If I then incorporate this all-pass filter,
now we hear it because we are taking one signal and turning it out of phase with itself. So how could this potentially be useful? Well, obviously just in doing this, it could be useful as a special effect, right? It's got a cool sound to it. It's very unique sounding, especially in this mode where it's like being filtered in a very bizarre way. But in a practical sense, let's say we have a multi-mic configuration. Let's say we have multiple mics on a guitar cab or we have like a, a acoustic drums where there's top and bottom snare, overheads, kicks. All pass filters can be used for dialing in and rotating phase in a way to make things more phase cohesive or less phase cohesive. So if we're doing something with a parallel send, like say we've got, like, let's say we're doing an exciter on a vocal common technique. I use, I do a filter at three K, uh, and then I will put it some like distortion and compression on this parallel signal, blend it back in. Sometimes that creates a phase discrepancy in the mids. Well, I could in theory use an all pass filter to try to correct that phase discrepancy. I haven't tried that yet. I would be interested to see how that works. In fact, let's do it right now. Let's, uh, Listen, listen to the low percussion without it. Just that doom, doom. Isn't that interesting? I hear a difference in both the snare and the low percussion. The low percussion comes into focus a little bit more and that snare becomes like a little bit more mid rangey. Uh, like almost plasticky in a way. I don't love what it's doing to the snare. I think it's interesting what it's doing to the snare, but I do actually really like what it's doing to that low percussion. So very, very interesting thing. I don't know how easily or readily useful it is, but it, it excites me because it feels like it opens up an idea of engineering for me that I never really had access to. And I kind of love that actually. So cool. Let's now talk about the one that everyone is talking about, and that is the resonance suppression that they have incorporated. So I am not a big fan of plugins like Soothe, where it's like pulling out little resonances. I find that it leaves more artifact and distortion than it actually fixes. It kind of cheapens the sound. Now, that's not to say that Soothe does not have its place. Sometimes it is a lifesaver plugin. And so it's one of those things where it's like, I most of the time I don't need it, but when I do need it, I'm really glad I have it. So they've incorporated something very similar into their design here. So I just want to test to see how artifact heavy it is, because that's the big issue with these kinds of like little resonant things. You put it all on me. I just pray that I will end up lonely. So I don't think this actually necessarily needs any resonance suppression, but let's see what happens if I do it. You put it all on me. I just pray that I will end up lonely, 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 lonely. I mean, it's pretty transparent. It's I'm not doing that much right now, but let's let's pull this like let's exaggerate this. You put it all on me. I just pray that I will end up lonely, 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 lonely. And let's move it into linear phase. You put it all on me. I just pray that I will end up lonely, lonely, lonely. I mean, it's actually genuinely not bad. It sounds pretty good. I'm able to brighten the signal quite a bit and it doesn't get harsh because it's doing this resonance suppression. It's maybe a little exaggerated, maybe a little bit more than what I would want to do. So maybe just like pulling it down a bit and then uh, backing this off a little bit. Uh, they also included the attack and release functions for the resonance suppression, which I think is good because that's where a lot of the artifacts are going to come from. Fast attack times in particular can be really rough. Uh, but I definitely can see myself using this for like uh, narrow band stuff in the mid range when there's like a lot of room tones that are showing up in our signal. And it sounds pretty transparent. So I'm actually pretty impressed. Uh, I was expecting not to like this, to be quite honest. And I think that it's actually pretty good. It does flatten the signal a little bit. And this is why I tend to avoid resonance suppression. It's like 
music is resonances. So you can very easily kill the life out of something. But at least in this case, if you're killing the life out of it, well, at least you're not generating a lot of terrible artifacts in the process. So uh, last thing they put in the uh, some of the Saturn algorithms here. I'm not in love with these, to be honest with you. I don't think that they're really bringing too much to the table. It's not bad, but I find that it's just with Saturn 2, you can get some really amazing results, but you kind of have to work for them. And just slapping it on hasn't really done it for me in this particular case. Uh, but that kind of, you know, brings it all to a close. Otherwise, you still have all the other great fe features that FabFilter Pro Q3 had. You have uh, independently accessed sidechain for, you know, your dynamic EQ sections. You have that versatility that comes with just being able to scroll and change the cues and everything like that. So, I mean, all the good things of the Pro Q3 are still there. So my general conclusion is actually I'm more impressed with this than I expected to be. I thought that it was going to be very gimmicky and not very useful, and I think that it is only slightly gimmicky and substantially useful and potentially more useful than I have actually been able to take the time to learn because of that all-pass filter. So I think it is worth it. I think that they've, they've really gone above and beyond, and they've incorporated a lot of features that are actually genuinely going to improve people's workflows, and, you know, I will probably buy it. So there it is. All right, if you dig this video, hit that like button. If you want to catch more videos like this, hit subscribe with the bell notification so you get notified. And lastly, you know what we say here at Weiss Advice. We are musicians, sound is our instrument, and I will catch you next time.